Well, come on, sin way. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Sisters and brothers, it is a great joy to welcome you to the Anglican Diocese in New England on this great festival day for all of East Africa here in Bridgewater at Faith Anglican and Grace Anglican Churches here in Bridgewater. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to begin, just so you know who's, who are some of the countries represented here, we're going to have greetings from our friends from all the different nations here. First of all, I want to welcome His Grace Archbishop Jackson Sabit. Thank you so much, gracious Father, to be here with us. Talk for him. Amen. William, would you bring us greetings, please? Canon William Beasley from Chicago. I bring you greetings on behalf of Global Mission Partners with the GAFCON movement worldwide in the Anglican Church. And um, Tutembe Famoja. Let's walk together. Caminemos juntos throughout the world. Amen. Greetings from the Church of Chicago. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's, let's hear from uh, Uganda. Where is uh, Alex? Ken and Alex, come and greet us, please. In the Ugandan tradition, we welcome you, then greet you. In the Ugandan tradition, we welcome you and then greet you. I'm going to welcome you, and then Michael will greet you. Our Uganda. So he's going to greet you now. Our Uganda, Mukama of Fate, one is a new, new Mukama of Fabers way, always say that you know Mukama Yavas way. Praise the Lord. Osman, would you come forward and greet us from Sudan? Thank you. Oh. Solomon, come join him. Uh, in the name of the Lord, 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 the all of Sudan, be welcome. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Reverend Paul Fua and uh, is Al Al Elias. Elias, please join him. Nguapendo amimi ntawakaribisheni kwa kiswahili. Jambo na buwana asifiwe. Karibuni Kenya, Kenya hakuna ma. Karibuni sana. Burundi, Joseph. Joseph Bizimana from Burundi. I think we have everybody has been greeted. All protocols have been observed. Let's begin with some worship and praise music. We have somebody to sing for us. Yes. Can the Ugandan folks come and sing for us? Or are they going to sing from there? Yeah. Okay. okay, go ahead. Hallelujah, 
baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunasema asante kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu mwaminifu asubuhi ya leo mchana wa leo tunakukaribisha kwamba ukawe Mungu katika ibada hii tunajilata mbele zako sisi wenye dhambi kwamba Mungu ukatusamehe na kwamba ukanena na nafsi zetu ili tukapotoka mahali hapa jina lako Mungu likapata sifa na utukufu tunaombea kila mnenaji wa katika ibada hii kwamba ukamtakase katika damu ya Yesu Kristo na Mungu tukaweza kukuona tunaomba yote katika jina la Yesu Kristo bana wetu amen Sisters and brothers the Lord be with you The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it Our help is in the name of the Lord I was glad when they said to me Let us go to the house of the Lord Praise the Lord Heavenly Father by the everyone together please Heavenly Father by the power of your Holy Spirit we give to your people new life in the water of baptism we wish to serve you in the world guide and strengthen us by the same spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your son Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The children from St. Paul's Waltham are up for us. <laughs>
nine. Deuteronomy four, one to nine. And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I'm teaching you, and do them that you may live and go in in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take it from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did to Baal for. For the Lord your God destroyed from among you all men who followed the Baal of power. But you, you who have held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. See, I taught you the statutes and the rules as the Lord my God commanded me, that you, you should do them in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them, for that will keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a good that has a God so near to it, or to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statues and rules so righteous as all in as all this law that I said before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. The word of the Lord. Be to God. O oh Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in the glory of the hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right, and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue, and does not evil to his neighbor, but does not evil to his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, and who swears to his own hurt and does not change who does not put out his money at interest. Chapter 1 from verse 5 to 10. Again, I'll read 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self control, self control with endurance. Endurance with good godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks this is blind and short sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. The word of the Lord.
scriptures. This is the reading of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, this is the reading of the gospel as found on St. Matthew's gospel, St. Mark's gospel, chapter 7, verse 1 to 23. St. Mark's gospel, chapter 7, verse 1 to 23. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come to Jer from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with his hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wore their hands properly, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they, are, they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining coaches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with their defiled hands? And he said to them, Well, did I say a prophesy of, the, of you, the hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their ribs, but their hearts is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching us doctrines the commandments of men. You read the commandments of God and hold the traditions of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his ma ma mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Korban. That is given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother. Thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me all of you and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person a whore defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciple asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but by but his stomach, and expelled. Thus he declared all fools clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what, is what defiles him. For, for, for from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, death, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord they come to lead us in amazing grace. Yeah, we all going to
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please let us be seated. Bishop Bill and Mama, I want to take this opportunity to thank God for your invitation to the Diocese of New England. And I also want to thank God for this church, Grace and Faith Anglican, for the invitation and for giving us an opportunity to come and share with you and celebrate with you this moment when God has gathered us together as his church from different parts uh, of this country. And I want to take opportunity also to thank all our clergy and the churches that have come from different places so that we are gathered here to worship him, to thank him, to acknowledge his walk and journey with each one of us. As has already been said, my name is Jackson Olesapit. The Lord Jesus is my personal savior. Amen. I thank him for saving me, not because I was good enough, but by repenting of my sin and being conscious of who God is and hearing his word, he made me his own by calling me also to minister and to serve him in his church. This is my second time of coming to this church and to this diocese. I was here almost the same time of the year, I think it was early July, uh, late June, early July, and uh, having an opportunity to come and be with you again is a great moment for us together that the Lord has given us a moment to celebrate him. I bring greetings from Kenya, from my own family, Esther, my wife and our children, from the members of the All Saints, the Cathedral Diocese, who know that I'm here, and the province of Kenya, who also has communication that this time in point, I am in New England Diocese. And I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for a warm welcome, and also thank you for a partnership in mission, and for giving us, God giving us this moment and opportunity to celebrate him as one family grown together from different languages, different colors of our skins, yet God in Jesus made us one. Amen? Amen. We are so grateful that the Lord has gathered us here. In the Anglican Church of Kenya, we rethink about mission and the position of the church to do mission and to be a change agent in the world. And our decade strategy for the next 10 years is a wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation. And we are asking God to help us to proclaim the good news of our salvation boldly and caring for the people of God as his church so that he will find a faithful servant when he comes again and take us home. So we envision a ministry that is going to be wholesome in nature where we will be listening to God what he says to our spiritual being, what the Lord is going to say to our physical being, what is he going to, to say about our health, what is going, God is going to say about our mental development and capacity, what God is going to say about our relationship, about our communities, about the environment he has given us uh, to care about, what is going, God saying to me about my neighbors and the relationship I should have with them, what is God saying to us as the people of the world as a big family of God. And that's why we are asking God to help us to deliver a wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation. And our imagination is that the local church has an answer to many problems affecting us on a daily basis. And we are redefining the local church as that place where people are gathered together and the church convene people together for them to have a moment of discussing about life, their spiritual well-being, their physical well-being, their intellectual and mental capacity development, their neighbors and their relationship, their upbringing of their, their children. How will we be listening to God and how will we have in conversation that enable us to address issues when we gather as a local church? So we are imagining a local church which is not going to meet on a Sunday and wait until the next Sunday to meet. We are envisioning of a local church that convene people every day of the week, that the mothers will be gathering, talking about their lives, their families, talking about their health, talking about their economic empowerment, 
and food, putting food on their tables. Men will be gathering, talking about their families. They'll be talking about the future of their children. They'll be talking about the ecology and the environment. They'll be talking about how do we do life every day. So that the church is a church that does life. We envision, therefore, a church that becomes a convener and sustainer of discussions around human, physical, and spiritual development. So that at the local church, we can be able to gather and discuss and implement and take action on things that make life, life that will please God. Therefore, I come to you from Kenya as one church to begin those conversations and imagination that through the local church it is possible for us to gather and become a family together and become community together and become one people together. I want to bless the Lord for what I've seen this one week when I have joined the family of Grace Church and Faith Community Church, this church which has gathered us today. They have come to churches, three churches, Trinity, Grace Church, and uh, community, Faith, Faith Community Church. And they have come from a diverse and a myriad background, different cultures, yet they found their commonality in Jesus Christ. They found commonality in their faith, and they said, we don't want to look different. We want to be the same. Amen? Amen. And that's why we are gathered here. And this is the beauty of a church that gathers people so that they can share their lives together. And I presume that their interaction together will enable them to grow on a daily basis, knowing that Christ is neither white nor black. Christ is the Son of God for us all. Christ is God and God for us. And therefore, when we gather, our differences are eliminated and our commonalities are promoted. The things that divide us are diminished. And when Christ takes the center stage, those things that unite us uh, come to the center stage in life. And that can only happen when the church gathers people so that they can reflect, read God's word, pray together, imagine themselves as community and as a family together. For indeed, all of us, black and white, are made in the image of God. We are made equally in the image of God, and the Lord himself holds us all in the same breath. He holds us all in the same breath. He doesn't discriminate. He doesn't see us different. He sees us as part of the human race he has created for himself. Maybe the differences of the color of our skin has to do with the climatical changes and the various continents that we come from. For every continent represents a different color of the skin, isn't it? It is more of climatic than the nature and the very substance that God made us with. We are made from the same substance. Amen? Amen. So we are one in Christ. Amen. We are reading from second Peter, the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, from verse 5. And this is what Peter says. And this was read to us very, very clearly. But let me just repeat so that I put emphasis on the words that God is going to teach us this day. But also for this very reason, Giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound in you, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his past or old sin. Peter here is addressing a church that he calls has scattered all over uh, Asia Minor and the surrounding. It was a time that uh, the church was scattered and uh, under persecution because people in Palestine did not believe in what the disciples were preaching about. But he knew there were faithful people scattered all over. And he's writing these letters to gather them around the word of God. They may not have been gathered in a particular location, but where they were reading this word, 
the word gathers them. And therefore he says, for uh, this very reason, be diligent in your faith. But that diligence is not enough. Add it to your faith. For faith is what makes us right with God. And faith needs some supplements. One of the supplements faith needs is virtue. A virtuous life. Somebody who sees things positively. Somebody who sees things in a good way. A virtuous life is one that young and wants to do things the right way and do the right things at the right time. But to that virtue, add knowledge. The ability to imagine, the ability to use our minds, the ability to use our skills and talents God has given us. He says we have to be knowledgeable, not only of things around us, but knowledgeable of the things of God. So he wants us to be knowledgeable of the word of God. And to that knowledge, when we know him, and when God opens our minds and our hearts for himself, and open our spirit to himself, and input in us that knowledge, then that knowledge will lead us to the next level. That knowledge will leave us, lead us to exercise self-control. If we have no knowledge and have no morals, if we have knowledge and cannot control ourselves, we can still use the same knowledge for self-destruction and the destruction of others. But if we use the same knowledge and are able to self-control ourselves, then we shall be in a better place. Self-control, he says, add perseverance, the ability to wait, the ability to wait a prayer to happen, the ability to wait a prayer to take its course, the ability to wait God to answer us, the ability to say, yes, the Lord is still coming. Uh, a story was once told of a great doctor. He was a great surgeon and uh, a cure of cancer. And in his own respect, he earned a lot of respect from many people. And this doctor was destined for a, a great award. And he was invited to another city for an award. And uh, as I read in a magazine, this man began his journey. It was to take him a four-hour flight to the destination where he was going to be awarded. And this man brought him to the place. In mid-air, the scary announcement from the captain came. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. And we are going to make an attempt of a landing in the next airport possible. Pass them your sister. Put your seats upright, ready for an emergency landing. None of us in an airplane want to hear that message, isn't it? <laughs> Does anyone of us want to hear that message? No. So they all heard this message. And the world began to panic, and they, those who pray, prayed. And uh, the pilot landed safely, the aeroplane. And they all clapped and were very happy and pleased. So they got out and everybody rushing, figuring out how they'll get to their next destination. And this man still was yearning to go to receive their word. And now because he feared flying, he did not go to book another flight. He went to straight to get a car hire. And he got a car to hire, thinking it is the most safe one at this point in time. And he asked, how long is it going to take me to that next destination? He was told about two and a half hours to three hours depending on the traffic. So he began his journey to his destination. But in front of him came a great storm, and he could not see the way. He missed the junction, which was to take him to the right direction he was going. And I know you people understand that very well. We don't in Africa, we don't have this many exits and junctions that take you. He began to lead you in the wrong direction, and the man was very lost. And uh, the storm intensed and became more heavier and heavier and heavier. So he saw a home and a road leading out of the road and he decided to pull out. And he went to the home. And uh, he knocked the door or rang the bell. And a lady appeared and said, Sir, what can I do for you? The man said, I'm lost in the middle of a storm. 
and I just can't drive on. I needed a place to rest until the storm is over. So can you please let me in? Give me a seat to sit on until the storm is over. That is all I did, what, what I did. A little seat fair, come in. Uh, feel comfortable, sit there. In a short while, the lady said, can I offer you a cup of tea? Or coffee in this country is more coffee than tea. In Kenya, it's more tea. <laughs> uh, the man said, sure. And uh, the lady in her living room, there was another extended bedroom adjacent. And the door was wide open. And she went to prepare the tea. But every time cooking the tea, she will dash out and rush to a bed in that little bedroom where this man can see and kneels and pray. Come out go to her kitchen place, bring the tea, leave the man again, go kneel down, pray, come back, chanted a little bit, went back again, pray. And this man began curious and said, what is it that you're doing? I see you go in, kneel, come, mumble a few words, I don't know what you're saying. And the lady said, I am in this moment of prayer. I am praying. The doctor said, do you believe in God? The lady said, yes, I believe in God. And the man said, uh, and you trust that what you tell him, he will do it? The lady said, yes, I trust that what I pray, the Lord will answer. Then he asked, how long does this God take to answer prayer? And the lady says, it can be instant, it can be two days, it can be a week. It can take a month, it can take a year, it can take ten years. It can take a lifetime, but I'll still pray. The man looked at her and said, I think that's the most foolish thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Praying for a whole lifetime and waiting for someone to answer a prayer whom you do not see, and you don't even know when it will happen. The lady said, yes, I believe God will answer our prayer. And this man looked at her very pitifully and said, I really pity you. I believe in science, I believe in hard work, I believe in human knowledge and capacity and capability, I believe in what I can do for myself, I believe in what my hands can deliver, not a waiting of someone, I don't know where he is or she is. The lady leaves again to go and pray, and she comes back, and the doctor says, what is it that uh, you are praying so intensely about? And the lady says, yes, I will tell you what I'm praying about. In that bed is lying my son. He has been suffering from cancer for a long time. I've exhausted all my resources. I'm told there is only one doctor in this country who can help. And I cannot reach that doctor because I have no resources to access him. Then the doctor is not interested because he treats cancer. He's a surgeon and he has cured and he's going to be awarded for the achievement of his treating cancer. And he said, and what's the name and address of this doctor? The lady gave the address and the name of the doctor who happened to be the doctor seated with her. So he says to this lady, so what have you been telling God? The lady said, I've been telling God because I cannot access him. Please, God, bring him from wherever he is to my house to heal my son. The doctor looked at the lady again and said, is that exactly what you have been telling God? The lady said, yes, that's exactly what I've been telling God. The doctor said, so now I understand. Why that plane got a problem? It was your prayer. Why the storm? came by the way, it was your prayer. Why I lost my junction, it was your prayer. Why I lost everything else until I found your house, it was your prayer. It was God answering your prayer now. I am the doctor. And I'm going to treat your son. And from now on, I will believe in that God. What is impossible to God? Is there anything impossible to God? No. He is a God who can work wonders. Yes. He can do more than what we can ask and imagine yes. for. So when he says, Pass a fear and wait, 
he will surely show up. Amen. 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 When he says wait, he will come in due time. It can be now, tomorrow, a year later, ten years later, but the Lord will surely show up. Amen. I don't know what your struggles are and what you have been praying for and yearning to pray for. But the Lord is here today saying, Amen. I can do it Amen. even now. Amen. I have the answer to your problems even now. Amen. That's why we are saying the, uh, the church, when it gathers people around this word, in the presence of this God, he will answer every one of us. Amen. He will answer our problems. He will come to the rescue of us when we needed to be rescued. He will provide for those things that we cannot provide for ourselves. He will heal us those diseases that we think none can heal. He will give hope when we are completely hopeless. He will give direction when we are completely lost. For in Him, none is lost. Amen? Amen. In Him, none is lost. He is to yearn to serve God. To be godly is to be faithful and preach Christ faithfully. To be godly is to do things God's way, not our way. Mm. To be godly is to listen to him and follow him. To be godly is to love others as we love ourselves. That's why he says, to that godliness, therefore, add brotherly kindness. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. And to brotherly kindness, add love. Love. And you know, God has repeated that word love many, many times in the Bible. It's repeated so many times. In the letters of John, he sums up God as love. And our God really is love. And if we want to define who God is, he is love. He loved us when we are not lovable. He loved us even when we did not love ourselves. He loved us when there was no one to love us. He loved us when we did not know what love is all about. He loved that lady who had been crying for the healing of her son. He loved that son who was lying in bed in pain by bringing somebody to attend to his problem. What I didn't get in the story was whether the boy was healed or not healed. But I believe God brought the doctor because he wanted the son to be healed. Therefore, the Bible says, if we have these things and have them in full measure, we shall not be unproductive. We will produce more and more in the vineyard of God. We are gathered here as churches, we are gathered as congregations, we are gathered as a diocese and interdioceses, we are gathered as province and interprovinces, because I come from the province of Kenya, you come from the province of North America. But God is calling us his children in equal measure. We are his children gathered here. Now we have a challenge. And our challenge is in the way we lead the people God has called us to lead. And one writer wrote a book entitled Leadership for Today and Tomorrow. And this is what he said. What is posing a great challenge is leadership without a focus. For even in the church, we can still be leaders without a focus. And he says leadership challenge is about leaders about how leaders mobilize others to want to get extraordinary things done in their own organization or local churches. It's about practices leaders use to transform value into action, vision into realities, obstacles into innovation, separateness into solidarity, and risk into reward. I want to put this in the perspective of the church I've come to learn and to see and to love called Grace and Faith Anglican Church. They were so different, so separate. 
For the leadership of these churches came together and they thought we are one. And they thought we can do much together other than individually. They began by one providing shelter to the other. And they began a journey of thinking together. And extraordinary things began to happen. They did extraordinary things beyond what they can measure. What they did they do? They were able to use God's gifts to transform values into action. The value of love into actions of loving one another. The value of being family and community together into actually acting as community together. They were able to translate action into vision for what they have been doing turned into a great vision. And they are now dreaming of building a bigger church. They are dreaming of extending their ministries. They are thinking of extending their services even to more members who speak other languages. They are thinking about growing children together. They are thinking about having a church that the future generation will call home because they have translated action into vision. And vision into realities. And today is one of the celebration of realities unfolding in this church. They have surmounted obstacles because they made their obstacles into innovation. Separateness into solidarity. And they are no longer separate. When you see Reverend Dorcas and Reverend Mother Leah, their separateness in the different colors of their skin has formed into a great solidarity. They are working as a team. They have uh, turned the risks into rewards because I believe when they first came, it was like it is risky. How do we come together? How do we open up our church to strangers? It was a risky business, isn't it? But that risk has turned into reward. They are now growing together. Their life is flourishing together. Amen? Amen. The challenge is about leadership that create a climate in which people turn challenging opportunities into remarkable success. Bishop Bill, what you have done by providing that umbrella in your diocese that this thing will happen, what you have done, you have created a climate and turn challenging opportunities into remarkable success. Canon Beasley and what you are doing in the greenhouse movement and what we are doing between the Anglican Church of Kenya and the Anglican Church in North America, joining together Twende Pamoja is to enable us to create a climate where we all can change challenging opportunities into remarkable success. And together we can. Amen? Amen. We can make a difference in our own setting. We can make a difference in our own community life. We can make a difference together in our own spiritual life. And this can only happen when we all journey together and make a difference in the life of many people, God has given us an opportunity to serve. As I come to the conclusion, yesterday I had a team of leaders, and uh, there were key questions we were asking, and I want to ask these questions very briefly, now to all of us, not only leaders. And these are the questions that will help us to figure out our mission and ministry together. These are questions that will help us to figure out our journey of faith with Jesus Christ together. These are questions that will, figure, will help us figure out our life in planet Earth as we move and march forward to a glorious life in heaven. So the questions I want to ask all of us, we may not answer now, but let us struggle with them. And let us make them part of our journey. What are some of the barrier beliefs Assumptions that make us dismiss the gospel. What are some of those barrier beliefs? We may have so many of them. In North America, you have so many of them. In, in Africa, in Kenya, we have so many barrier beliefs and assumptions that make people dismiss the gospel. And at this point in time, 
we are in an era that everybody is dismissing the gospel and the church as something of the past. Yet our modern civilization is based on values and principles founded on the word of God. In America, what is guiding you in your constitution? In God we trust. That was the foundation this nation was created. Those are the foundations that made this great nation which rose to be a leader in the world. So what are some of the barriers that have emerged today and beliefs and assumptions that is making this generation to dismiss the gospel? There could be many. You will find the answers. But please, when you find those answers, ask God to deal with them. What are some of the fears and worries and hearts that surround our lives today? What are your fears? What are your worries? What is worrying you every day? What is hurting you? Because we all have many hearts and many worries. What are they? Because unless we expose them and bring them to Christ, the answer of all our problems, we will continue to be guided, intimidated by them, and pushed away from God and experiencing the love of God by those fears and worries. But when we bring them to God, He will deal with them. Christ dealt with our worries and fears on the cross. And that's why the word tells us, fear not, fear not. What sins are most evident that the gospel needs to confront first so that we heal? What sins are in front of us every day? What are some of the things that we are doing against God's will? What commandments are we breaking on a daily basis? What hurting things are we doing against one another in the environment God has created that we must ask Christ to confront them in our hearts so that we are healed? How do we account for the wrongs we do every day? How does the world account for the wrongs that we do? Do we hide them? Do we explain them? Do we justify them? Or do we bring them to Christ in repentance? In what ways are we self-righteous? Are we reach a place that we think there is nothing we need other than what I can do for myself? Are we that place when we think I am complete and able and I need no God? Are we in that place that we think my way is the only way, my path is the only path? Are we there? But on the other hand, what gives people hope and aspiration? What gives you hope? Are we identified with Christ or we have other multiple identities? What is good news that will give us identity today? What brings hope to my life? What opportunities are available that give life meaning and value to the life of other people as I serve them? Particularly us who are leaders, pastors and bishops. What opportunities are available that give life to meaning and value that the people we serve will find their life meaningful? Where are the places, activities, events in which we meet people and give hope through the gospel? A gathering that like this one is what we yearn for. Opportunities to gather is what we yearn for. Can the church provide the answer by becoming that gathering place? Are there existing social networks like family, comrades, people who are gathered together, a community of faith, that encourage one another and encourage us? Are you forming community and commonality in your lives? What are the time scales of our lives? In other words, what is the rhythm of our lives? How do you organize the time that God has given us to have time for God, time for self, time for others, time for self-development, and time for providing to society and to our own families? Do we have that time? And how do we organize what God has given us? What is our identity? The Lord says in Peter chapter 1, verse 22 and following, once we are not a people, but now we are the people of God. Amen? Amen. If we gather around the local church, 
we will find answers to those questions. And when we say the church can become a convener and sustain of discussions around human, spiritual, and social transformation, then the church give answers to those questions. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word this day. We thank you for challenging us. We thank you also for encouraging us. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to raise questions that we will seek answers from you. And what we ask of you, Lord, now is journey with us. May your presence become our individual experience that you'll be present in each one of us and answer and attend to all our needs. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray this blessing and believing in the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Alex, come up here and give me a hand. Are you blessed? Yes. yes. I think you know this from East African Revival. We're going to sing a little bit. To good tender as I yes. Yes, Please present Rose Bita for licensing as a lay reader. that you may admit her as a lay reader in the Anglican Diocese of New England. Brothers and sisters in Christ, is this person Rose who has been chosen, trained, and brought before God and us to be admitted to a lay reader. However, if any of you here gathered have just cause why, any, why Rose or anyone admitted to lay reader should not be admitted, you should come forward now and say it or else forever hold your peace. Is it your wish that we admit Rose as lay reader? It is our wish. Will you support her in her ministry? We will support her. As a lay reader, Rose, you are called to serve the church by supporting the parish priests in the reading of the Word of God, conducting the service, leading in worship, expounding the scriptures so that people may be well nurtured in the truth. You are to work under the parish priests, Dorcas and Leah, assisting them in their pastoral ministries, such as vis visiting parishioners, the sick, the lost, praying with them, encouraging them, assisting in burying the dead, and offering other such help and services as may be required by the leaders from time to time. Rose, are you willing and ready to perform these duties faithfully without being goaded? Yes, I am. Rose, will you follow the doctrine and practices of the Anglican Church in North America and to teach the same? I will, through God's help. Will you endeavor to promote unity of peace and reconciliation in your ministry? I will, through God's help. Will you endeavor to fulfill the Great Commission, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with fervor in season and out of season? That is my honest desire. Rose, Will you in all these things, just and lawful, obey your bishop, the priests, and all who have authority over you? I will, through God's help. Come here and hear please. Hear 
Brothers, I admit you to serve the church as a lay reader in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers, take this Bible and preach the Lord Jesus Christ in season and out of season. Amen. Amen. And now receive this scarf and hear the prayer for you this day. Ever-living God, who sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and to reconcile us to our Maker, we thank you for calling this person Rose to be a partaker in the Great Commission in which your Son, Jesus, commanded us to preach the gospel at home and abroad till everyone on earth has heard it. We thank you for the confidence that the, in her congregation has given her to serve the church, not expecting any monetary remuneration except the joy of serving the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Father, the Father look with favor upon your servant Rose. Bless, may he equip you with the power of the Holy Spirit that you may faithfully prepare the services that you prepared for the services ahead of you, to the end that your work shall glorify God and edify his church. And may the blessing of God Almighty be upon you when you're going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. 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 Please clap for her. Would the, uh, the ladies from Uganda also step forward who are going to come and assist the ladies from Kenya in the admission of Mother's Union members today? All the ladies from Mother's Union, please. To encourage parents to bring their children up in the Christian faith and the Christian life. To encourage Christian unity all over the world by coming together in prayer and worship. To enhance the community's livelihood in conformity with the expectations of good family and to adhere to the protection of children. To help those who have family problems. These are the ones who have accepted to be members of Mother's Union. They are ordinary members and associates. For those qualified to be ordinary members of Mother's Union, you are, are you baptized and agree that it is right for true infants to be baptized, and they also promise to accompany their children for baptism. Have they accepted the teachings of the Apostles' Creed? Are they faithful in their marriage vows? Have they acknowledged their faith to live five very important deliberations for Mother's Union. Young women married may also be accepted, unmarried women may be accepted into the Mother's Union if they have a heart for the deliberations of Mother's Union for its work and if they are to be guided by the ordinary members in their deliberation. So let's pray then in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself, a chief cornerstone. And in him the whole building is joined together, which rises to become the temple in the Lord. In him you too are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by His Spirit. For this reason, St. Paul prayed, I kneel before the Father, from whom His whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And I pray that out of His glorious riches, 
He may strengthen you in the power through His Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that being rooted and established in love, you may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the brothers, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope. What you were called? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father of all. It is over all, and through all, and in all. Okay, those are who are to be welcome. Don't get preach. It's everybody? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to see you Okay. <laughs> This is, we are gathered here together to admit these people as members and associates of Mother's Union. It is our unity that has bound us together and therefore linked together in communal work, in prayer and in service. May the Lord be praised and may the work continue. I ask you, uh, sisters, would you like to be admitted as a member of Mother's Union in the Anglican Diocese of New England? Will you endeavor to fulfill through obedience through deliberations, through your example, through your leadership, and through the prayer. Will you organize yourself daily so that uh, you may set a time aside for the reading of the scripture, for praying, and for the church services every Sunday? So now it is my joy to admit you to be a member of Mother's Union. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sure. Mother Dorcas is going to help me greet you each one by name. Go ahead. Okay. Esther, why do you move one thing? Yes, we are a member of Mother's Union in the name of Mother's Union. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Rose Wanjiro Karongo. <coughs> Rose, I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Reverend Leah Turner. <laughs> Reverend Leah, I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Judy Warenga Wainaina. Judy, I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Judy. Amen. Esther Mumbi Karoli. Esther. Welcome, my sister. I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father. Amen. Milka Jean Dongo. Milka. I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Milka. Amen. Mere Kongo. I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Joyce Karogia. Joyce, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jen Wawero. Jen Wawero. I admit you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jen Mwangi. 
Jane, we welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jane and Kamau. Jane, we welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth Karioki. Elizabeth, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary Green. Mary, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth Nyapura. Elizabeth, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of Rose Kemani. Rose Kemani, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lillian Wanjiko Giyadi. Lillian, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wamboi Ndomo. I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Rose Mbitu. Sister Rose, lay leader in our Mother's Union. I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Esther Gichohi. Esther, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, of God the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Teresa Mushai. Teresa, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Helen Stone. Helen, I welcome you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jane Kamau. Together, let's say the promises. I will prove through my example and testimony that marriage can be holy until death. I will teach and bring up my children to be faithful members of the Christian church, for through their baptism, they have been made organs of this body. I will also help other women to do the same. I will be faithful in prayer, in reading the Bible, and in going to church on Sunday. And I will always partake of the Holy Communion. Church, let us pray for these new members of Mother's Union. Listen to our prayers, O Lord, and be kind unto these your servants, the ones we have admitted in your holy name, so that they may be united spiritually with the blessings of Mother's Union, relying upon your grace that they may live worthy lives, following in truth and purity, so that hereafter they may attain everlasting life. And we pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Ladies together. All ladies, let's pray together. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, the followers of Savior Jesus Christ, and your servants grant us ability to fulfill our promise and to protect our marriages so that they may be holy and consequently help others to do the same. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you sent your Holy Spirit from above to prepare our spirits so that we may resemble you. Breathe your love into every father and mother here that they may serve you and awaken all of us so that we may know that you, what we ought to do and lead us and rule our lives and those of our household. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To stand and clap and greet these ladies.
point out uh, to you is I want to tell you a little story as the men are coming forward. Uh, I was with Bishop Timothy in Mount Kenya South uh, in 2009 or 10, and he took me out to a, a service like this. It was outside near the tent, and um, they were going to accept people into Kenyan uh, Youth Association. Kenyan Men's Association, Mother's Union, Confirmations, and we were going to hear from the people of the East African Revival. And they wanted me to preach. After six hours of the service, I turned getting a little bit nervous and I said to, I said to Bishop Timothy, Timothy, it's six hours since we started. Could, could we have a short call? And he said, yes. <laughs> After I came back from the short call, I said, we went another two hours, and I said, you still want me to preach? He said, oh yes, you have to preach. <laughs> I said, Timothy, it's been seven hours. He said, I, I can, I'll can. i preach for a little bit. And he said, if you don't preach for half an hour, they will be offended. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, my brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great, great. Uh, so before the brothers read their ten points, I want to point something out to those who are just figuring this out. Kama is Kenyan Anglican Men's Association, and so. Two years ago, we started here, the North American Anglican Men's Association. So this is the first place where we've begun to do that. So we're very, very happy and proud to hear these men. So they're going to share their oath now. There are ten aims and objectives of AMA as follows. One, to promote God's kingdom and to set forth his glory. To help its members to grow in spirit, mind, and body, and be nature in faith for every good work. To encourage members to pray an active law in the mission of the church. To encourage Christian principles in national civic community life to encourage members to undertake acts of Christian service for the distressed, disadvantaged, and the disabled, to encourage members to use the gifts God has given them as a steward of God's varied grace, to encourage members to use the resources in supporting the work of the church at all levels, to encourage Anglican laymen and women to play positive roles in political, social, and economic life of the nation, 
to honor the institution of marriage as ordained by God and to promote Christian family values, to promote Christian fellowship, love, and unity in the church and society, and to promote spiritual enthusiasm among members. So these members are being presented to become members of the North American Anglican Men's Association. And they are um, Alan Peter Nwangi Karinga. Karingu. Peter Munguero. Munguero? Peter? Munguero. Francis Kibuji. Uh, Julius. Mana? One. One. And Justice Knuthian. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Would they, these men please be presented? Our Father in God, we present these men to be admitted into the NAMA in the new uh, Diocese of New England. Mm -hmm. Take care that these men who you are presenting to me have been well instructed in the aims, objectives, and functions of the North American Anglican Men's Association and are full communicants in the Anglican Church of North America and are men recommended of good character to their respective local church committees, parish councils, and are committed Christians so that we may enroll them. We have instructed them in the aims, objectives, and functions of NAMA, and we have received assurance from their respective local committees and parish that they are men of good standing and are committed Christians, and therefore should be enrolled as members of NAMA. My brothers, do you accept the 10 aims and objectives of NAMA? Yes, I accept the aims and objectives of NAMA. Will you faithfully endeavor to fulfill the set aims and objectives in your own life, and will you cooperate with other members of NAMA at your local church, parish, and in your diocese to promote these aims and, and the objectives of the association? With the help of God, I will. I admit you into the membership of the North American Anglican Men's Association in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please come forward as Dorcas reads your name. Alan Peter Mwangi. Welcome, Alan. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Peter Waweru. Peter, welcome, and I bless you. Francis Kibuki. Francis. Julius Maina. Julius. And Justice Kinutia. Justice. Okay. And we uh, recognize our Ugandan brothers, Ugandan Men's Association. Are they here as well? All right, then uh, let us pray. May God, the Spirit which has led you to desire membership in North American Men's Association, help you to fulfill the vows you have made today before God and this congregation. And may you be a blessing to the North American Men's Association and this congregation, parish, the diocese, and the Anglican Church in North America. And may God bless you and your family abundantly. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brothers. Good luck to them.
on page 16 of the service, we have come to the opportunity to elevate the next Archdeacon for Kenya in the Diocese of New England. And we need a microphone for these presenters. Thank you. Here we go. We present to you the Beloved Rokas Obak by the mission to the position of Archdeacon. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge, wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them all and always. Let us observe a moment of silence and bring Dorcas before the Lord in prayer, let us pray for darkness. Eternal God, the foundation of all wisdom and the source of all courage, enlighten with your grace this your servant, the Reverend Dorcas Albrecht, and make her an archdeacon in this diocese. So rule her mind and guide her counsel, that in all things she may seek you, glorify and promote the mission of, the, of your church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now join with the bishop and say those words of elevation. In the name of God and of this diocese, we elevate you this day to the position of Archdeacon in the Anglican Diocese of New England to oversee the Archdeaconary of Kenyan Churches and Missions here in the Diocese. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. She has been elevated. She was Reverend Dorcas Albrecht. Now she is the very the venerable Dorcas Albrecht. Venerable Dorcas. Reverend Dorcas, now venerable Archdeacon. I am pleased this day in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, that we have elevated you to Archdeacon in the Anglican Diocese of New England. You have been called to work together with your bishop and fellow presbyters of this diocese as the Archdeacon overseeing Kenyan churches. Take your place in the councils of the church, my sister. Now in accordance with the canons of the Anglican Diocese in New England, you have been selected to serve the diocese in fear and service of God for the benefit of this ministry. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Work and care for, grow and unify our Kenyan communities. Love and serve God's people. Nourish and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. And this letter is now signed that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry accepting its privileges and responsibilities as archdeacon in this diocese, in communion with your bishop and other archdeacons and canons, may the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them, given under my hand and seal this day in the city of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, in the 11th year of my consecration, actually it's in the 12th year of my consecration, 
uh, William L. Murdoch Bishop in New England. Not for her.
has a word for our new archdeacon. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Our time. Before I say a word to the new archdeacon, and I want to congratulate her, I want to invite uh, all members of this archdeaconaries, and Veronica, um, St. Paul's, St. Faith Anglican Church in Rowa, and uh, actually St. Faith Anglican Bridgewater. We have uh, four churches in this archdeaconary, and it's my prayer and the hope that by the time you leave the office, there will be more than double. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, I want to present to you the new Archdeacon, the way we served in love, obedience, faithfulness. We will continue the same to her. You accept her in your churches, your congregations, you will continue to serve with you. You say you accept her. <laughs> he accepts that. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, Drokas, I have uh, three words for you. I've been serving this at since 2009, and I want to tell you God will be with you. Moses handed over to Joshua to take the people to Canaan. Joshua was faithful and God used him. So be faithful unto God. Speak and study by the truth. Obey your bishop. I have been obeying the bishop, and whenever things went wrong, we sat down and we shared together. I hope it will continue the same way with you, and God will bless you. It's my prayer, and I will continue to pray for you and for, the, for our churches to be growing from one length to the other so that God may be glorified. Amen. God bless you and take care of you. Thank you very much. For me, I was called Venerable Peter Rashadi. From now on, my title changes. I'm Leverett Canon. Maritas Peter Gashabi. So don't address me, venerable, address me, Leverage Khan. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we want to share a couple of, uh, a couple of announcements with you and, and bring greetings, because um, there's some organization that we'll need to have at the end of the service. Uh, one of the things that I know will happen, having seen this movie before, is that there will be a great rush to try to take pictures with His Grace uh, Archbishop Jackson Subinton with myself. We're going to organize that by churches, so that um, the Archbishop and I will stand wherever the shade is, and, um, and you will come one church at a time as a whole church for pictures. You will line up with us, we'll take the picture, and the church will leave, and the next church will come. And we will line up and do that probably over here after the recessional, before we eat. And I know all of you can't wait to eat this great food, so this will be a very quick picture-taking event. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for your cooperation. We'll organize you to do that later on. Uh, I want to welcome to the microphone, uh, to bring you greetings because he has to leave at the end of the day, um, the Reverend Canon William Beasley, who is head of Greenhouse Movement, and uh, now the, the leader of the, the network for GAFCON's Global Anglican Mission Partners Network. William. Thank you. And I bring greetings to all of you. Uh, as Archbishop was sharing that beautiful, powerful world word today about coming through a storm, and then the moment of realization that you've gone through a storm, but then you're sent by God. I, some of you here could identify with that, right? You could identify that, how did you get here to this place at this time? And even if it wasn't a storm, I tell you, brothers and sisters, you've been sent by the Almighty God to be here in the Anglican Church 
of North America in this diocese and in the diocese throughout North America on mission. Amen. You've been sent by God for mission. My wife brings greetings. She is the daughter of those who trace themselves back to the Mayflower. And by, um, as you can see, I have a lot of uh, white skin and English blood in me. And I, um, I come from Anglican families, and so does she. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, even those who us were immigrated a little bit earlier than you, it's the same family. And in our Lord Jesus Christ, there is, is Jesus white or black? He's for all of us. Amen. We all have the same blood. We all share the same need of the gospel. And brothers and sisters, on this historic day, as the church is going forward, I declare to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that you, all of you, are at the center of Jesus' church. And we together, we together are on mission here in North America because we are in desperate need in North America of the transforming presence of Jesus Christ, of his gospel, of his mission. And we walk together. We join hands one with another. Uh, I now uh, remind me of, of Alex in, in Swahili. It is, uh, is the last word. To, to, oh, we got it. To tembe pajoma, right? <laughs> We're gonna learn this word together, right? And we're going to learn this word throughout North America. This is just beginning. We're going to have gatherings like this throughout North America, right? And the Kenyan church, the Ugandan church, the Church of Sudan is on mission with us in North America. And all of us together, together, pajama. I know, I want to say pajama, but it's not right. <laughs> we're together. By the grace of God. Mamoja, you're going to teach me. Mamoja. Hallelujah. God bless you. Our Archbishop Foley Beach, when he took over for Archbishop uh, Bob Duncan, Robert Duncan, called us to uh, go forward, always forward, everywhere forward. And now today, as church from every tribe and every nation gathers here in Bridgewater and Faith Anglican and uh, Grace Anglican churches in the Diocese of New England. Yes, Tutembe Pomoja. Amen. 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 We will walk together always forward, everywhere forward, right? Yes. For the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ until we bring Jesus to all the nations. Amen. And we have been so blessed by His Grace Archbishop. Uh, Kenya has led the way. Kenya has uh, consecrated me. Amen. 11 years ago, 12 years ago, 2007. This is my 11th anniversary, so I'm beginning my 12th year. And so, in the 12th year of my consecration, there's a movement that has been started here today. That is, we will walk together in the gospel, for the gospel, for Jesus, everywhere together. Amen? Amen. Every tribe, every nation, together. Amen. Until we bring many to see Jesus as Lord and Savior, until we unite ourselves across this nation and across the world. And so we thank and praise God for the leadership of East African Revival, East African Church, and for this great day. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And now the children are going to come and sing for us as we prepare the table for Holy Eucharist. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice. This is the children's choir and dance group from St. Paul's Waltham, Uganda Church. God bless you, ladies.
since the music has cut us short, I will say a word. Hallelujah. We are so much blessed to be here. I present the children of St. Paul Anglican Church in Waltham. We are so blessed to be part of this community. Our church is a Ugandan church. And for that reason, I will say something in Uganda. Because I've heard other languages speak their languages. Hallelujah. Hey. Mukama Fayeva Zwe. Mukama Fayeva Zwe. But now Uganda have anyone of Mukama Fayeva Zwe. We have a reason to celebrate. Hallelujah. There is a reason why we are here. And for that reason, it's to Amen. Amina. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. But to Tamblefe now for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May the good Lord bless you.
Still collecting. Which is hot, that supplied all that we need. We pray, Lord, you'd multiply these offerings for the glory of your name and the mission of the church in Kenya. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for thanksgiving and remembrance. Is the Father with us? Yes. Is. is Christ among us? Yes. Is. is the Spirit here? Yes. This is our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We are indeed. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the faithful ancestors in heaven and on earth, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, honor of all things, we thank you for giving up your son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. For your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him, in the way he commanded, through these gifts of your creation, on the same night when he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Bring this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We have died together. We will rise together. We will live together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement of the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering for you by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Jesus is Lord. This is the feast of victory. The Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Hallelujah. And now, as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us to pray, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one bread. Draw near with faith. Christ is the host of the United States. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, keep your body and soul to eternal life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The Amen. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which is shed for you. Keep your body and soul in eternal life. Bring this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Amen. Amen. Sister Leah will give you directions for communion. You may be seated during the administration of communion.
shop. You don't want to go back to school. You have to go back to school. Back to school. <laughs> come, come, those who are going back to school. Those who are going back to college. Some of the children are happy, some are not happy. Stand, but especially parents, and extend your hand in blessing for these children with me. Archbishop, will you join me and pray for these children? Let us pray for our children as we go back to school. Heavenly Father, we thank you and worship you this day. We just please me to gather us here to worship you and to thank you. And we want to thank you for the great gift of life that Lord we all have and possess because you say we have it. And now, Lord, we want to also ask of you to bless our going out and our coming in, in our homes, in our villages, in our places of work. We want, the Lord, to ask you to bless our families, bless our children as they grow up into those families. Bless them at home and bless them in school. And now these who are gathered here ready to go to school, we speak a blessing upon each one of them. But you're going to give them good health in school, you're going to give them joy, you're going to give them excitement as they learn new subjects and new topics. Lord, give them a moment of great times in school. Yes. May you prosper, Lord, their learning as they absorb many and a lot of information process uh, to them. And as they process in their minds, Lord, enlighten them, illuminate them, expand their thinking horizons. And Lord, make them your own. Yes. May they become successful in the exams, those who are going to see for the exams. May they become successful, those who are going to colleges. And Lord, may the learning they are going through now become a great moment of opportunity for them to grow into a living reality when they grow up, to work and to provide and to give the contribution they are going to give in the nation and in the nation. Lord, develop their talents and their skills. Develop, Lord, their innovation and ability to innovate things. Make them, Lord, a generation that we shall cherish and say in their generation a lot happened because you gave them knowledge. Yes. Thank you Jesus for this moment and this time. Bless them now in the church, bless them at home and bless them as they go to school. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 and uh, Michael's daughter, Tessa. Tessa is on her way into a gap year of mission work. She's going to Pittsburgh for training for se several months and then you're going where? Thailand. She's going to Thailand and Southeast Asia to serve the Lord. So we're going to pray for her and commission her as she goes out as one of our, our, our next young people going out in mission during the gap year. Uh, extend your hands in blessings and pray with me for this, this wonderful young lady. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you would fall upon this your servant, Tessa that you would bless and strengthen her, protect her, go before her and behind her. Anoint her, O oh Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit. Protect her in all her days. Let her mind be open to the receiving of your word, her heart filled with the power and joy of your presence. We pray for those who train her, who supervise her and care for her, that you would give them wisdom in the ordering of her life, and that you give to her a heart of submission and obedience and the joy and wonder in all your works and bring her to Southeast Asia with uh, the joy and power of your spirit, bring her back healthy and mature and ready to serve you for the rest of her life. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Receive the blessings. We have certificates here uh, for the Faith Anglican Community Church. Members, I will pray for them, and the HD God will distribute to them to the members. Let us pray for these certificates and the members who are going to receive them. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We thank you again for giving us this moment to celebrate you. And Lord, we want to thank you for the commitment you have for us and draw us to be committed to your ministry and your mission. Thank you for the members of this church, both Grace Church and the Faith Community Church. And now, Lord, as the members of Faith Community Church receive these membership cards, 
We pray that Lord will bless them as members of this church, increase their day and deepen their knowledge and understanding of you. Lord, expand their faith in you. Give them grace to serve you. And Lord, give them your presence every day of their lives. <coughs> and as they receive this certificate, I remind them, as members of this church, may their membership become a great opportunity for you to minister to them, but also for you to call them to minister to others as they are becoming a community and an extended hand of you in the church to bring about the good news of our salvation to others in their lives and the what they speak to them. And now, Lord, we bless these certificates as they receive them. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The post-communion prayer on page 25. Almighty God, together. Almighty God, eternal, eternal Father, we are sought at your table. Learn from your word and eat it from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your spirit through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Now we have our cross uh, over there. We are going to send all our problems to the cross of Christ. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's work we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter darkness from before your path. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for the food that will be served and that we will be eating. And I'm going to give instructions to our priests and archdeacons and deacons uh, to gather your people for photographs with Archbishop and I over here in the shade immediately, one church at a time, in an orderly fashion. I thank you, clergy, for taking the initiative to lead in that fashion. Let us pray for the food. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for the food that we are about to eat, the hands that have prepared it, the generosity and the abundance of this day. Bless it to our bodies. Bless us into your service through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The recessional. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Amen.